I like that stomping. I don't know if my I don't know if the neighbors will, but I like it. So we're going to start today for episode 70 by talking with one of my favorite people in downtown Las Vegas, the GM over at Local Motors, uh, Gina. Thank you so much for coming out. Now there's some pretty big things kind of going on right now. I've heard that the White House is actually having a maker fair. Tell me all about that. Well, in 2012, the White House had a science fair like they do every year, and they invited Joey Hurdy, he's a 12-year-old and budding scientist, to come, and he did a marshmallow cannon. And the right. president was so enthralled with the marshmallow cannon that he decided, wouldn't it be great if we had a maker fair for the White House? So the, co the country used to be a built on manufacturing, that was our roots. We've kind of gotten away from that a little bit, he wants to bring it back, and STEM education is really important for children, science, technology, engineering, and math. So to promote that, the White House is having a maker fair on the lawn of the White House. Okay, now is Local Motors gonna be able to go to the White House? I can neither deny nor uh, <laughs> confirm? confirm that, <laughs> but the president likes cool companies that make cool things, and we're a really cool company that makes cool things. I bet you're gonna be there, that's what I think. I'm not saying you said anything. I'm just saying I think that that could happen. Okay, so how can people get involved in the event? Okay, so if you can't go to the White House and, and be at the event, what the president is asking is that everyone makes things that day and uses the hashtag Nation of Makers. Mm, and so that. make things, post them online, have open houses. Sin Shop is going to have an open house on that night from 6 to 10 over at their offices on 4th Street. And they're going to all gather and people are going to make stuff because that's what we do. Okay, so what's that gizmo you brought in the back? That big box that's printing out these wristbands you brought we everyone? Are, we made everybody in the audience these really cool 3D printed bracelets. They're red, white, and blue in honor of the White House Maker Fair. <laughs> and um, we're printing them out right now so you can see it. It's on a MakerBot and it's a 3D printing technique that can make pretty much anything you can think of. Okay, so these things cost like, what, 20 bucks each to make? <laughs> no, they're super cheap. Uh, it used to be like a dollar a pound. They've gotten it down to almost like <laughs> one cent a pound now, so they're basically, you know, as cheap as uh, you can make a, something out of plastic. Okay, and then anybody can just print these at home. Yeah, you can print them at home, you can make them Very what color cool. you want, you can size them up and down, and so that's what we do. We make stuff, we made these cruiser bikes, you know, we just kind of, we're a vehicle innovation company, and but we also use 3D printing within our innovations. Yeah, so tell me about uh, what, what are these motorcycle, bikey things, that you got set up here? They're, they're cruisers, and so this one's gas powered and this one's electric powered, and they're prototypes. Um, we're, we actually kick started them, and uh, they're now going into production, so uh, we finalized the prototypes. So you built these yeah, we right built out them the window from here? Ground up, okay. Yeah, right down here uh, in downtown Las Vegas. Okay, and then do you want to just give everybody a quick understanding, like for those that aren't here, what Local Motors is and what you guys do? Local Motors is a vehicle innovation company, so we um, micro manufacture rather than mass manufacturing. We micro manufacture for an individual location. So for uh, this area, we made a car that goes um, off roads in the desert, but it also is street legal in all 50 states. It's called a Rally Fighter. That was built for this area. Um, we, are, we built a, a design, a car for Boston. We haven't produced it yet. It's an electric vehicle because we are now going to 3D print an electric vehicle yeah, in I Chicago. Thought that was cool. So these bring we, the big printer yeah, and it, print the car out yeah, and drive away. Right, cutting edge technology. Wow. So Henry, um, Henry Ford is not going to like how you change that plan on the car building so. well that's the way it goes you know no saying, yeah we're just gonna print out our own cars you know yeah, he probably would have loved it what am i talking about okay all right well it's hashtag nation of makers shoot nation. that out and uh yeah i think that'd be awesome to see the white house having a maker fair so thank Great. you for telling us about that thank you okay so i want to jump now over to ronda k so a bunch of wasted food is what i hear but what is harvest season and what are you guys doing at projectangelfaces.org Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, harvest season is the coming of the Las Vegas fruit harvest. I'll say that again, Las Vegas fruit harvest. Yeah, we Las Vegas fruit. fruit harvest. It's pretty incredible how much food actually grows right yeah. here in Las Vegas. Over 25 and a half million pounds of fruit grows in local neighborhoods all over the county and goes straight to the landfill every year. Mm. And Project Angel Faces program is called Neighborhood Fruit Harvest. It's one of many sustainability systems programs that I've created to shift the way that we live our lives, the practice of our living habits, away from wasteful practices toward making the best use of our local resources and more sharing. 
And that's what Project Angel Faces is all about, the easiest way to get involved, the easiest thing we right, can yes. all do to, to accomplish sustainability is stop wasting our food. Over 40% of the food in the entire nation goes straight to the landfill. Yeah in all the houses. So if we can just stop wasting that food, we'll have a lot less hungry bellies. And what Project Angel Faces does with Neighborhood Fruit Harvest is we couple with landowners, private property owners who have productive fruit trees. We harvest that fruit with a harvesting party. The property owner gets the pick of the crop. The remainder of the crop is shared with elders and youth at highest risk locally. So gotcha. it's really fun. It really lights up our, our lives a lot. Both the process of harvesting is a really nice way to get a little bit of exercise and everybody has a great time it's yeah. a fun way to so is this also just friends. for people that have like i mean if you got the apple tree in the backyard like a dan like probably dan or someone has something like that like you just call <laughs> call these guys up and then they'll come take it or yeah you get in touch with me at project angel faces you can find us on the web at projectangelfaces.org you can find okay. us on facebook as well and you just let us know that you have a heart of fruit tree that you want to harvest or you let us know i want to get involved in helping collect that harvest i want to be one of the volunteers that comes so to, awesome. to that yeah. harvest party that's great yeah. so you just saw this need and then just started decided to tackle it as kind you of an know, entrepreneur yourself and i did it's a it's a it's a bit of a different did you, kind of story. Guess, did you work at a restaurant or something no, I, heard, I heard that's no. the worst that you no. see like food go okay. well that is one of the largest <laughs> ways that we waste food but i saw the food waste from the tree next door to mine they had nine productive fruit trees and no one lived in the house Oh, and so there was gotcha. literally 15,000 pounds of food just right next door from the trees that grew right there. So the okay. thing that we need to change, the easiest way to do it is just notice the fruit that grows in your, around. Notice the fruit. If okay. it's in your yard or someone else's, and then we can start to share it. Okay, projectangelfaces.org. Everybody check that out if you know of a stranded tree making fruit. Awesome. Okay, Thank all right. You. Now I want to take it over to Rob. So you are doing very, very cool stuff. I have an- It's not school fruit. I, I bought, no. <laughs> or, well, it's not here. Yeah. MakerBot. MakerBot's pretty cool. Yeah, the cool is a tough so word. Yeah. Like, this, cool. You're talking about virtual reality. It's She's talking fake. about something that's helpful. <laughs> like, virtual reality is cool though. So you have, so uh, you have a virtual reality meetup that's happening. Please tell me more about this. So yeah, this is just a, uh, a side thing that I said, uh, well, I work at a company uh, here in town that makes startups uh, called Originate, right. and so we've got a bunch of software engineers. Well, I drug about three of our software engineers out to Orange County to a virtual reality hackathon, and, uh, and they won. And I kind of got the bug, and I said, we're not doing anything like that out here in, um, in Las Vegas. I don't know if you've, seen, you, you've played around with the, the, the Rift, the Oculus Rift yep, a little right. bit. Yeah, right. So, yeah, I've got a buddy let me borrow it for a few days, and yeah. I've actually been playing on it all this week. So, so you know, with right. Facebook just buying them and all the fun stuff that's happening yeah. with, with virtual reality these days, uh, we just thought uh, there needs to be something happening out here in Vegas. And so a quick look at the meetup, uh, the meetup scene, there's nothing going on. So I, uh, I put that together and um, ordered a couple of the, the new dev kits, and uh, we're going to have a demo session and, and basically get everybody interested in you know, coming out and just kind of hacking on stuff. We're going to throw some hackathons. Uh, you know, this is for game designers, for developers, for anybody interested in you know, education. That's another great place for yeah. you know, virtual reality in the future is going to be that. Uh, if you saw Lawnmower Man back in the day and <laughs> fell in love with it, or, or let's say The Wizard, whatever, whatever. You, you yeah. know, everybody likes virtual reality, so uh, we're going to get a little bit more uh, more fun with yeah, that. Yeah, especially just people that haven't even put the headset on, right? Yeah. So developers that just so want to get their cool. feet wet. Yeah, oh, it's totally cool. So, I, yeah, when I was playing with it, like they, I put on an app where it let me see the real like size of planets, like relative to each other, and yeah. but I could fly through. It was just crazy, like, and I could see my knees. I felt like it was me. I got a little yeah. wobbly on my chair and stuff. So I mean, it's an immersive experience, and I think totally. it, it is the new frontier for developers to explore. Yeah. So the 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 the, uh, the thing that the guys put together for the the hackathon was like a typing challenge game. Learn to type. It was an educational hackathon. So they they basically had a uh, you know virtual keyboard. And you'd just be, you know, doing your thing, and then blasting the words as you look at them, like, <laughs> like out of it was like asteroids meets learn to type, and right. so they won the hackathon. It's a whole new paradigm. Yeah, for it. it was yeah. really fun. Okay, all right. So where is it? What are the details? Where can De people visit this? Details are we're going to throw our first meetup here uh, July first uh, out at the Innovation Center, Switch Innovation Center, and we're going to have some free food probably, a little bit of drink, 
Uh, we're gonna have some demos. The guys from the Orange County uh, Hackathon or the Meetup Group, they're gonna come out, bring their riffs. You can bring your riff. Uh, we're yeah, gonna. I'm borrowing mine. Yeah, well, gotta, then I'll get those then, guys to bring it. Exactly. So we're just gonna have some demos and just kind of get everybody a little bit more, you know, acclimated toward the new stuff that's happening. Okay. So I see. Yeah. Next one, Ju Tuesday, July first, six o'clock p.m. at the Innovation Center. Just search. Yeah. Just search uh, Meetup for okay. virtual reality. We're the only thing in town. There's only like couple of dozen of people doing it so far. Okay. All right, Rob. Well, thank you very much for thanks. coming out and telling us about no, it. Thanks thank for you, having Gina, us. Thank thanks you, Rhonda. So thank you, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're the one that set off that stomper. I like it. It's good. Okay, so you guys are going to love our next guest. He is the former engineer turned entrepreneur and now former entrepreneur turned video producer. He is a storyteller that has filmed over 400 entrepreneurs and founded an amazing company called LG Pictures. So please put your hands together for Lynn Graft. Thank you very Thank much you. for coming Thank out. Long horns. What's up? Peace, peace. Okay. So, t-shirts and duffel bags. I don't even remember why I wrote that. What's, why is that my first question to you? When I started my first company, it was a Monday night. I was working on my business plan. There was this event in Austin, Texas, where they typically have a Lumineer come and they talk about their startup experience. And I got there late, didn't know who it was, but it was always a great speaker once a month that they had. So I walk in and this fairly short individual, kind of balding, and had a duffel bag and t-shirts, and he starts going off telling this story. And he pulls up the first t-shirt and he goes, this, and he's kind of a nerd, small. He goes, this, this company, great idea. We never could get the, we could never get the technology to work, and it failed. Okay. Pulls out another t-shirt. Great idea. We got it to work. Nobody cared. <laughs> Couldn't make a product. Okay. Drops that down. Third t-shirt. Great idea. Great, great product. People would buy for it, but we couldn't make it cheap enough. So he drops uh. that down, gets to the sixth t-shirt, and he goes, oh, man, this one finally, we got a product that worked a market that worked, we raised $20 million, and we still failed as a company. And I'm like, who is this guy? And who keeps giving this guy money to do this thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he pulls out the last shirt, and he didn't show it around. And I, Brian, I don't know who this guy is. And he goes, this company, great idea, great product, great team, perfect timing within the market. And the people that just funded us, that we lost their $20 million, they backed this company. Turns around, and it's AOL. It's uh, Mark Seraf, one of the three founders of AOL. Ever since I saw that story with my first startup, I've been enamored by the stories of entrepreneurs and trying to capture that and share it with others. It is fascinating. So do you feel like you've, could you figure out if a company has the right fit for something? Are you, know, you there I, yet? Uh, no, I, well, I, the one of the things that I've noticed that I can definitely say no matter what, there isn't one way to do anything. Gotcha. It doesn't matter what right, industry, right, right. what space, the, 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 there's di diametrically opposed ways to approach things, and people are just as successful. Okay. Okay. So entrepreneurs are very common here in downtown Las Vegas. We've got about 60 small businesses, about 70 tech investments. And so a bunch in from here. the yeah, probably a lot of them here. So um, when when you're talking about these people that are kind of in this sub five hundred thousand dollar kind of realm, like how should an entrepreneur craft a story that could help them? There's a couple things you really need to do. And, and first, what you're trying to accomplish is to make an emotional connection with whoever your audience be, be it that a, an investor, a customer, someone to get uh, sign a lease for you. You want to have what if some it's these connections. Guys? If it's these guys over here, I want to entertain you. I want to make sure that oh, you're yeah. paying attention. A lot you guys entertained? Yeah. 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 So I want to find a way to relate to you all as an audience. And I want to speak of something. So there's a lot okay. of people that I film that are exceptional at that, is to find that emotional connection, something that will relate to you. And I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, Carly Roney. Okay. Carly Roney is the founder of The Knot. And the way that she makes an emotional connection with women is that she goes back and tells the story of when she founded The Knot. And it stems from her wedding experience. She had a mixed race marriage in the 80s in New York City without a whole lot of money in a certain area of town. And back then there was only bride magazines. And she relates it was the worst day of her life. It was oh, a complete catastrophe, to be the wedding worst nightmare. Yeah. Um, and it rained, it was, everyone was sweating, it was really terrible. But she decided to create the knot, and the, every time she tells the story of the knot to women specifically, she goes, I created the knot so that you, as a future bride-to-be, never have to go through what I experienced. So any woman 
that wants to get married, that's an, an immediate connection because for a lot of women, it's one of the most important days of their life. So you find ways to make that emotional connection. So if you can find, as an entrepreneur, with your technology or non-tech, find a way to connect with your audience, then that's one of the critical things to do. That's really interesting. Okay, so find champions. That's kind of what you're talking about, right? Like finding the people that you're going to help in the future. And then speaking from the heart, like being vulnerable, I guess is the best way to think about that, or yeah, at least let, finding something that's honest. Let me take the, the latter one first. Um, I went through a, a leadership class in Austin, Texas, that where I met one of my mentors, and she was really good at being able to connect with the audience. And she gave us an example of how you do that. So she gets up she, and she talks to the crowd in a, in a normal way that a lot of people do. She goes, "Well, I have an idea. It's for a rape crisis center in Austin, Texas, is to help women." that are in danger with their spouse or boyfriend, whatever it might be. So that's how she said it the first time. Then she says, now I want to show you how, if you want to speak authentically from the heart and be vulnerable, she goes back and she thinks of someone in her life, and she, she kind of has a moment of silence. She goes, I think of someone in my life, my sister, my mother, uh, maybe my daughter, and I think about them being beaten and having no place to go. She, she goes to that place where it's very personal to her. So the next time she says it, it's all, you can see the, oh, like the emotions, emotions are in like her kind of eyes. Encapsulated and and in on the story, camera, yeah. one of the things I'm trying to do as a producer, director, I'm trying to make that connection as well. And my job is to elicit questions from you that get you to get your eyes to glisten. Yeah. Whether you're crying or smiling or happy, that energy. Um, and that's what you're able to do. When you tap inside of that emotional connection that you have with your own story, it shows in your posture, it shows in your eyes, it shows mm -hmm. in how you present yourself. That's one of the most important things you need wow. to do as an entrepreneur. So if I got drunk enough, the audience member would feel a little drunk? Yes, it, it, you make people do shots to get <laughs> yes. them there, whatever to <laughs> get them great. over that hump. Shots help in that regard. All right, that's how I'm crafting my story. All right, <laughs> so tell me about, um, uh, tell me about do, you, do you love honking at cows when you pass them? So before, when I was an engineer, I knew that I wasn't going to be an engineer for a long period of time. I decided to go teach skiing okay. and look at grad school. So as I was cruising this country, examining grad schools, um, I was in my car. I ended up living in my car for two years and I taught at two oh, different geez, resorts, really? living in, in okay. Tahoe and in Colorado at Breckenridge and, and Heavenly and taught and had a great time. And one of my favorite things to do is you're stuck in the car four or five, six hour road trips as you're driving 60, 70 miles an hour, <laughs> and cows, they have this crazy thing that they do. It's not- oh, Cows are crazy, well, I know, they're, I know they're, where you're going. Idiots. So if you're driving 60 miles an hour, and you're right here, the cow's right there, by the, when you honk, the sound comes from here, the cow looks, by the time the cow looks his head up, they're, they're doing like this. <laughs> they're right, chewing their cut, and they're yeah. looking where the sound was, instead of where you're at. And, and, <laughs> I just find that kind of fascinating and keeps me. <laughs> oh, that, that was the whole point, for right hours. there. I mean, this keeps me awake. It's like tapping the wrong side of someone's shoulder. Right? Yeah, it's like, like that thing's, <laughs> You were that kid, and yeah, now it's moved so on to cows. In, in like, Texas, that's, that's a little bit different. That's more like cow tipping, okay? okay. <laughs> Which is a good sport, too. That is awesome. Okay, so uh, tell me about this story in high school where you, or in college when you got everybody drunk on caffeine because they banned your frat from alcohol? No, or but, nobody well, could have alcohol. But, this is when I learned kind of my creativity when it comes to storytelling or creating events that oh, are gotcha. different and unique. Related to a good um, story. And I yeah. still try to do things like this today. So what happened was I became rush chairman for our fraternity, and our fraternity that particular semester went dry. Not, okay. I mean, the campus went dry. No more alcohol in these rush things. So yeah. as a fraternity, you're like, what the hell are we going to do? Like, where recruitment's going to go down. So, yeah. so I'm trying to brainstorm and think what we could do. Obviously, we'd bring women to attract the guys over there, but we need something else. And that particular time, the cola jolt, cola, it was twice the caffeine, twice the sugar came out. Jolt, yeah. And Who knows jolt? Boy, Steve jolt? said it? Oh, we got some old guys. Nice. Yeah. Old okay. school. Two, two cans, five o'clock in the afternoon, can't be up until three o'clock in yeah. the afternoon. <laughs> they were a decade too early before the energy drinks. Gotcha. You know, okay. They were doing the same exact thing. So we ended up, I called Jolt up and I said, hey, we've got this party. We can't serve alcohol. Can we have Jolt? And they brought like this full semi full, as much Jolt as we had. We had Jolt for the entire semester. Okay. And it was incredibly successful. We had 100% recruitment that semester from that one particular party because the party was amazing. Everyone was just going 100 miles an hour, bouncing off the walls. Very successful a lot of those creativities along those Were they still drinking? I mean, you, no, is, it, is this like a beer bong, but beer bong with Jolt? Or do you just, did, we, no, did we, we have no, the we characteristics? Had, we had those little Dixie cup shots 
You okay. know, you make the jello shots thing? So, we just okay. passed, so people are doing shots all night long. Do shots of you red You are so lucky you didn't get a heart attack. <laughs> that is so cool. All right. Um, so last question is just give me a story. Like you've been, you know, you filmed over 400 of these entrepreneurs. Um, you've been in this kind of boat yourself. Like what is the story that is the best story? Like what, when it comes to you thinking back to all these experiences, what's somebody who did an exceptional job crafting a story? For me, there's no question where um, I had an opportunity. I had been doing a bunch of videos for a couple of years, and I got a big project with Microsoft. It was kind of my first major project. And that led uh, my business partner, now Ingrid Vanderbilt, she's the former uh, entrepreneur residence for Dell. She had approached a network, CNBC, and we crafted the show called American Made. And we ended up landing the show with CNBC. And it was the first primetime series at night. And when we got the show, we were like, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, and they're like, oh, yeah. shit, we got to make this thing happen. <laughs> and one of the most challenging things to do in a brand new show on a fledgling network, and CNBC was kind of fledgling at the time, is to try and get these big name entrepreneurs to go on this network. Because they want audience and reach, and they don't want to be embarrassed. They want it to be a good long show, and we're going to do this hour show. And luck would have it, we ended up securing Howard Schultz from founder of Starbucks. Okay. And that was a big win. Yeah, big yeah, win, yeah. Big win. Great entrepreneur. And his, uh, they have handlers that control how much time that they get to mm. spend with the interviewers, the press. And she goes, so you're going to get 30 minutes one day and 35 minutes another day. One's going to be at the headquarters, one's going to be at this coffee, urban coffee shop downtown because we want to highlight what we're doing in the urban space. And I was like, holy crap, we're going to make an hour-long episode off two half-hour half hour interviews? Right. It's really, really <laughs> hard to do. But we did the first one. It went really well. And then they, gave us, they allowed us to film the shareholders meeting. And in the shareholders meeting, he talked about this story that over the holidays, his, his wife's father had invited him and his wife, and she was pregnant at the time, over them for Thanksgiving. Okay. So they show up to the house, and his wife is the breadwinner in the family, and she's pregnant. He's not making any money. He's starting Starbucks, and they're going there for the holidays. Right, right, right. And so they're hanging out, doing their own thing and that thing, and he says, Howard, let's take a walk. So the father-in-law asks you to go take a walk, and Howard's like, oh, crap, yeah, what's going to happen? Trouble. So he goes to this walk, and he says, you know, I respect what you're trying to do, and that's, that's honorable, but you need to quit that stupid like entrepreneurial thing. Make some money for my daughter. Yeah, yeah. quit that entrepreneurial right. thing and take care of my daughter. You know, and, and to abbreviate the story, he basically says, you know, I didn't, I stayed the course, and we're, we are where we are today. It's like a 10,000% return on their stock from when that particular time he was talking to the shareholders. And he had shared that story on stage to the shareholders. And he's talking about this to Ingrid in the interview with the coffee shop for the show that we're doing. And he, and he shared on camera that um, he went and cried after that. Yeah. And as a producer director of a primetime television show, and you get the founder of Starbucks to say that he cried, that's a really good right. thing. Right, so you get the emotional <laughs> push, yeah, you, got the you emotional know what he went pain. through, yeah. He, he shared an experience that was really tough for him because he showed, it was just so difficult for him to deal with that and then share that with his shareholders even after all that success. And one of the things he said after the fact is sometimes the difference between winning and losing is this gray area of perseverance. Mm -hmm. And that's just that golden nugget that you want on every show. It was just this brilliant capture of success. That is amazing. And to me, it, he is the epitome of one of the best storytellers I've ever been around. And every, I could listen to that story 10 times. He, he, he looks Italian, and he's a good-looking guy. And he's right, tall, he's, and he's got a great presence about him. He's probably got the he whole boardroom really staring at him. He's That's a good place. Cool. To, and a couple, I'll throw a couple. Watch Scott Harrison from Charity Water, another great storyteller. Gary Vaynerchuk uh, with Vaynerchuk Media. And uh, Howard Schultz. Good OK. Dude. No, I think it's an important part that a lot of entrepreneurs don't think about. So. Okay, so just to finalize this, we have uh, storytelling for entrepreneurs.com, and then that's what you have. I don't know if I'm going to get the camera in there, but you got this at the UN. Yes, this week cool. I got very to quick. go to the United Nations for an on, a group of 100 entrepreneurs that from around the world. I told you, I, I Googled your image and it, it showed something at the UN. I'm like, oh, it must be another one, you know, but that was you. That's impressive. Um, and then we also, people, if you guys want to follow him, you can go to Lynn Graff, L Y N, just one N G R A F F. FT. Uh, FT. FT, like sorry. Skin Graff. Yeah, sorry, Graff. I remember. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, so check out storytellingforentrepreneurs.com and there's an email set up there or something like that. So um, if you guys, if you're ready, I think it's time we give them our famous song. Have you had a drinking song sung for you before? Um, 
Oh yeah, not it, when with I was jolt? Sober. Only not yeah, with, with, with real not when alcohol. Sober, except for jolt. <laughs> okay, with real alcohol. Good. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers! There you go, nice. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Holiday with Holiday What TV. I celebrate holidays all the days on YouTube. For example, today, June 12th, is Crowded Nest Awareness Day. Anybody know what this is about? Anyone live in a crowded nest? Do you know what it is? If you're a parent, for example, and your child moves back in with you, or you're a grandparent raising your grandkids, or maybe you're an adult kid and, and your parent moves in with you, and then, and then it's all this craziness happening. Anyone have a similar thing happen to them? Well, today we, we must give support to those with crowded nest syndrome. And we must close our eyes for two seconds and send them a little prayer. Give them some, some humor and love on this day for them, okay? Close your eyes. One, two. Okay, I feel better now. Also, today is also Loving Day. Yes, do you know what Loving Day is about? Yeah. It may not be, though, exactly what you think. What's cool about these holidays is it's not just about the bizarre and the silly and the quirky. It is also, you're looking all very serious at me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, it's also about, they can give you a window into American history. So let me tell you. So we have Mildred and Richard Loving. She's black, he's white, back in the early 60s. They get married in Washington, but they live in Virginia, where it's not legal to be married if you're an interracial couple. So they go back to Virginia. A couple days later, the authorities bust into their house and they're arrested and sentenced to jail for a year each. So they plead with the judge and they're allowed to skip the whole jail thing and just move to Washington. But they don't want to be in Washington. They love Virginia. They miss their family and their friends. So for five years, they're working with the courts. And then on 1967, on this day, Loving versus Virginia. And they win! Thereby, yes! It's a big deal. Thereby, ending the ban on multi on, on multiracial interracial marriage uh, in all states at that time it was 12 states that's loving day and according to time magazine today is the biggest day of the year for the celebration for multiracial couples i think it's a very big deal and what's also a big deal is we have this man here dusty trevino back from dot vegas do you remember this guy a little bit he was here just just a few weeks ago sponsor for downtown podcast four months once a month this is your june we're in June, yeah. yeah. This is your June, June yeah. appearance. So let's give them a quick little recap on the uh, dot .vegas. Sure, yeah, dot .vegas is a new top-level domain. And a top-level domain is anything that comes right on the dot. So most everybody's familiar with dot .com, dot .net, and dot .org. Now there's actually gonna be a dot .vegas on the internet. So you can get a web address that ends in dot .vegas. I love it. So now, last time we talked, I remember there was a big launch happening for trademark holders. That's right. How did it go? So far it's going really well, yeah. Uh, June 2nd, which was the last Monday we launched. Uh, for Come on, that's a big deal! They launched on June 2nd! Where's the enthusiasm? Thank you. Okay, go on. Uh, yeah, and so it was for trademark holders only, uh, but so far we've seen very nice participation, especially from the local community. Like, and, give me examples. Uh, we've had a lot of the casinos coming in with Caesars, uh, Paris, New York, New York. I mean, them, see, very, that's, very that's amazing. Yeah, Did very, you guys expect that that fast? Uh, not that fast. We're very pleased with how it's turned out. So I far. am very absolutely. impressed. Yeah, absolutely. That's a big deal. All right, so, um, so now why would someone in Vegas want or need a dot .Vegas? Uh, you know, again, it's a great opportunity to brand yourself, your digital brand, with the city of Las Vegas. You know, mm -hmm. you know it, it not only is it a location, but it's a state of mind. It's, a, it's an image. And so it's a great opportunity, instead of getting a .com, to get a .vegas. And last we talked, uh, uh, we had a little meeting, and you were using fancy words like matrix and algorithms and things. And I don't know what all that means. Can you explain that to them? Sure. I mean, you know, one of the things we were talking about is the, the search engines, Google and Bing and stuff like that. One of the things they've, they've never looked at before is anything right of the dot, because it always ended in com. Right, so now they're starting to actually look left or right of the dot to see on an organic search result if you're searching locally, if you end in a dot Vegas, one of the one of the metrics in the algorithm will look right of the dot and potentially resolve higher than on a search criteria. Mm. Now, here there are big implications for the city of Vegas yes. if you have a dot Vegas. Yes. So tell me. Yeah. The tell city, them. The city again, you know, on top of again being one of only four U.S. cities that actually has its own top level. Only four have a only dot four? city. I mean, come on, that's big. Only Go. four. They also it's it's a great public-private partnership with us. 
where they are generating, uh, they get received 10% of the revenue of, uh, of dot Vegas domain name sales. So the city of Vegas gets a 10% revenue if you have a dot Vegas. Exactly, yeah. So anytime we sell a dot Vegas domain name, the city gets 10% of that. I mean, that's cool, so. yeah. Yeah, applause, I like it, yes. Very good, very good. Well, I want to thank you very much for being our sponsor for four months. I'm really excited to see you in July. Yes. yes so thank you again, Dusty of Dot Vegas. Also, want to remind of everybody here that tomorrow is Blame Someone Else Day. That's what tomorrow is. Yes. So you know, just you can lie tomorrow. Something happens. You you hit you the rear end. You just blame that guy. It's okay for tomorrow. Happy holidays. I'm Mac Holiday. Good night. Hashtag.